Hey guys, uh, Bill here from Pulitics again. Uh, as promised, uh, starting this week, we're going to make a few videos to help you uh, better use Google Analytics as your organization. We're going to start with basic things like setting up Google Analytics on your website uh, correctly and track setting up event tracking on your website. And then going to more uh, complex analytical topics like how to analyze your customer journey with Google Analytics, how to do attribution modeling and segmentation, things as such. So today we're going to start with something simple. We're going to start with uh, talking about how to set up Google Analytics uh, on your website. Uh, even though it might seem to be a, a very easy topic to cover, in fact, uh, a lot of the business owners uh, and small medium-sized businesses I talk to actually do not have uh, Google Analytics set up correctly on their website. Uh, they sometimes double track, so uh, the same page views get sent twice to Google Analytics, which greatly inflate their data. And sometimes the bounce rate is not tracked correctly because uh, they accidentally uh, click the event as an interaction hit where it should not be interaction hit. So we're going to cover all these issues in uh, this video and the next one. This video is going to be more focused on uh, setting up Google Analytics and introducing Google Tag Manager uh, as a good tool to help you set up Google Analytics where the next one is going to go more in depth about setting up event tracking. So uh, this video is going to be divided into several stages. Uh, in the first stage, we're going to cover a few key concepts uh, about Google Tag Manager, about Google Analytics, about website, about how everything works in general. The second stage is going to uh, show you uh, several things you need to prepare uh, to have that uh, configuration happen. And finally, on the third stage, we're going to show you how to uh, actually set up Google Analytics on your website with Google Tag Manager with an example uh, using Squarespace. So without further ado, let's get started. So let's begin by uh, going through some conceptual frameworks uh, about how uh, to track uh, your user behavior data on your website. Essentially, what we're trying to accomplish uh, by integrating tools like Google Analytics on our websites, we want to somehow uh, send user behavior data, record user behavior data on our website, and send these recorded data to tools like Google Analytics. Traditionally, the way it works is that we will set up a separate tracking code for uh, each of the analytical services we have. So Mixpanel has Mixpanel's tracking code, Google Analytics have Google Analytics tracking code, etc., etc., etc. This approach has two problems. The first problem is redundancy. So for example, if you are tracking page view data on Google Analytics, on Facebook Pixel, and on Mixpanel, you have to send this page view data three times to three separate analytical services. And that will drastically slow down your website because you simply have to send too many of the same information to different platforms. The second weakness of this approach is it becomes really painful to manage all these code snippets on the header of your website. You literally have to probably have like 100 lines of code before your website even starts. And that becomes a challenge for developers to manage and keep everything up to date. At the same time, uh, on a similar vein to this, when you're trying to set up event tracking, uh, you have to physically go into your website uh, and make sure that integration happens by adding a code snippet onto your buttons. That's usually not the easiest thing to do. And that's actually not sometimes possible for content management platforms like WordPress, like Squarespace, simply because uh, the templated system uh, it's very complex to manage and code around. So enter tag managing systems, such as Google Tag Manager. What it does is instead of sending your data directly from your website to your analytic services, you actually send your data to Tag Manager first. And then Tag Managers will uh, figure out what data to send to what analytic services based on the need of different analytic services. So if you're trying to send page view data uh, to like 10 platforms, you all need to send it once to Google Tag Manager. And then Google Tag Manager will manage where this page data will go, uh, whether to Google Analytics or Mixpanel. And that doesn't impact the loading speed of your website. All right, so with that conceptual framework in mind, let's talk about how uh, to actually prepare for setting up uh, Google Analytics with Google Tag Manager. So there are three things we need here. 
First is edit access to your website. Uh, I don't mean full coding edit access. You uh, just need the permission to be able to embed uh, some code snippet into your header, and ideally uh, your body or your footer as well. I'll show you why later. Second, you will need to set up a Google Analytics account and obtain the tracking ID for that Google Analytics account. Finally, you will need to set up a Google Tag Manager account and obtain the tracking snippet for that Google Tag Manager account and embed that into the header of your website. We're not going to show you in this video how to set up Google Analytics account or Google Tag Manager account because those things are simply one Google way uh, to obtain. And honestly, Google designed a very good process to onboard you onto these services. What are we going to do, however, is to show you how to embed the Google Analytics uh, and Google Tag Manager tracking snippet onto your website with an example with Squarespace because it varies across content management platform, but it's almost a similar concept that we need to go through uh, to make that happen. So now let's start uh, by talking about uh, your website and how to get to the place where you can embed your code into the header. So now let's go to Squarespace. And go to our website. So this is a typical way for you to uh, access your content management system. Uh, if you have WordPress, it's something similar, a similar signing process, and you'll have a similar dashboard like this. Same thing for Wix, anything, etc. So what you're looking for, uh, it usually falls into the advanced section uh, of your website, so setting advanced and you're looking for something called a code injection. As you can see here, code injection enables us to uh, place additional code uh, into the uh, header, footer, or sometimes body tag of the template that we're using on these content management platforms. You might have a question here. This is what I want to touch. Uh, why header? Why are you placing everything in the header? Uh, you, you probably have heard this thousand times from different analytics platforms. I'm going to show you why. A header is uh, had this special place uh, in web analytics, and that's why we need to place everything there. So to understand that, let's go into the header of uh, our website. Just to mitigate confusions here, your header is not these things. It is not uh, the navigation bar or uh, the banner or uh, the main banner of your website. No, these are not headers. The headers define things like what is a page title? So for example, here, our page title is Humanalytics, defines that. Uh, how do you configure the web page display for uh, different browser sizes or different browser types? Right? What package to preload? What theme to preload? What template to preload? So the header is much like a pre-configuration step uh, your browser goes through uh, before loading your website in the first place. So for example, for our website, you can see that the header goes from all the way from there to here. Header have two primary advantages. First of all, it's always loaded first, which guarantees the fastest and most in-time loading of your uh, tag for page views and other purposes. Secondly, headers are, if you put in your theme, it's consistent across all pages of your website. So just by placing that snippet of code into your header, you can make sure all pages within that theme are being tracked. And it's very rare to see a website that have more than one theme. Uh, if you are doing that, you're probably a best user, and uh, you will know what to do with Google Tag Manager, embedding code, things as such. So with that out of the way, uh, let's now find that code that we need to put in the header here. If you are setting up Google Tag Manager from a new, your last step will just give you that code snippet. But if you already have a Google Tag Manager set up, you need to go to Admin tab and then go to Install Google Tag Manager, and you'll get the code here. As you see here, there are two codes here, which is very strange. One need to be placed after opening up the body tag, and the other one need to play in the header. In fact, you only need to place the first one for most of the tracking to work on your website. The second tag here are considered a if we may say a backup tag, it's a no script tag. So in case that JavaScript is not enabled in the browser, uh, or the user have disabled JavaScript, uh, the, the no script tag will still be able to send some information to Google Tag Manager. So what we need to do here 
is we want to copy paste this specific snippet into the header section of our website. And then here, it said paste code immediately after opening your body tag. It's not possible here with Squarespace because we see no option to do that. So the closest I can do is uh, to place it in the footer, which is unfortunate, but as I said, most of your uh, user behavior is going to be recorded by this tag anyway, so it's perfectly fine to place it here. It doesn't really matter uh, that much in most cases. And then there's one thing we need, uh, is the ID for a Google Analytics account. If you have Google Analytics set up, you'll have something like this. And if you go into the admin tab, tracking info, this is where you find your tracking code. You don't need a tracking snippet here. The only thing you need is a tracking ID. So let's just keep it on this page because we need to copy paste this later. And go into stage three, which is actually setting up Google Analytics on your Google Tag Manager. So with that code embedded on our website, we can already call it a day uh, in terms of changing our website and close this tab. Now it's time for Google Tag Manager to shine. Here, let's give a brief introduction of the three key concepts in Google Tag Manager, which are the variables, the triggers, and the tags. What a variable is are configurations on your analytics platforms and any other information you want to store that are essential in setting up your tag through Google Tag Manager. What trigger is are the definition of user behaviors on your website that you want to track. So trigger could include a viewing a page, clicking a certain button, anything as such. A tag connects the trigger with the setting variable on analytics platforms and make this connection happen. So for example, what we're doing today is we're setting up a trigger for all page views on our website to be sent to the variable called a Google Analytics configuration. And that describes a tag. So without further ado, let's create that tag. As I just described, uh, when you're talking about a tag, you're talk talking about two things. One is uh, several variables to define the analytical services you want to send it to, and then a triggering concept on your website. Triggering is very easy for us because all page views already are pretty fine variable, so we just select that and set it as a trigger. For tag configuration, uh, we want to set up Google Analytics, Universal Analytics, which is, and it's naturally supported because it's a Google service. So we're tracking page view here, we're going to event later, and then we need to set up a Google Analytics setting by creating a new variable. So let's create a variable for Google Analytics setting. The only thing we need here, everything else is pre-populated. You can look into them later. If you have any questions, feel free to email me, but I'm not going to go into this uh, in this video. What you want to do is you want to copy your tracking ID into the uh, variable here and call this Google Analytics account, or anything that you like, that are descriptive. Click Save, and your variable will be populated. And that's it. Name your tag. Uh, Google Analytics tag duplicate because we already have it set up on uh, our website and I'll click save. So technically you're done but you don't know that you're done because we haven't tested it yet and testing is the most important part of any coding or technical exercises. Luckily Google Tag Manager gave you something very easy called a preview mode to make sure that your settings working. So let's go into this preview mode. Click preview here. Wait, nothing changed. But let's go to your website. If you refresh your website, you'll see an additional section uh, that's available on your website created by Google Tag Manager. What we want to see here is to see if the, our tag is firing as intended, as every time we see a page, the tag that we just created is being fired and sending data to Google Analytics. So I'm going to click the contact page for our website. And you see that Google Tag Duplicate, this thing we just set up, is fired, has fired on this page and sending data to Google Analytics. So we know that it is working, and we know that the tag configuration we just did is correct, and Google Analytics is collecting data from this tag. Voila. 
when we know this is working, it's time to publish our changes. This is actually very important because if you don't publish, this change is not live, and your Google Analytics is still not collecting data from your website. So you need to click Submit, fill out these descriptive information over here, and then click Publish. I'm not going to publish here because we already have a Google Analytics tag set up on our Google Tag Manager account. But when you click Publish, you're all set, and your Google Analytics should be collecting data immediately, and you probably will see your newest data when you wake up the second morning. All right, so yeah, that's uh, everything that we're going to cover on this video. Uh, we went sidetrack a little bit talking about header because this is something that people keep telling you to do, but you don't get the concept of. But overall, it's pretty plain and simple. Uh, next time, we're going to go into a little bit more detail, a little bit more in depth uh, with using Google Tag Manager uh, tracking by showing you how to track events on Google Tag Manager. Uh, so without further ado, I'll see you guys next time.